Hello everybody and welcome to Max TV Local On Demand's presentation of the Saskatchewan Provincial Judo Championships. Vanier Collegiate in Moose Jaw is the background for some of the best judokans in the province as they compete for the top prize here in the province. With me right now is Destiny Gibney. I'm Dan Plaster, just to let you know. And tell us a little bit about what we're going to see here, because most people, when they see judo and think judo, they think Olympics or Commonwealth Games. Yeah, so this is our provincial championship. So we're going to see a lot of great different levels of judo, our, our provincial level who fight up at nationals and, you know, some lower levels, some orange belts as well. So it's a really good opportunity to see what the best of the best look like at every level in Saskatchewan. So I'm going to learn a lot today. We're going to see a lot of great athletes on the mats. So let's head to the mat and get things started. And we get to start things off in the U10 level two category. And uh, coming to the floor uh, right now in the, you'll be able to see a blue sash. And that would be Alex McLean. And then there's Harley Ann Allen, both from the Junori Club. Uh, I just said words that probably people won't understand right off the hop. Explain the blue sash as you see it go on. So the blue sash is just to differentiate competitors really at this stage. They wear the same judo geese and you have to know where they are on the scoreboard. And as in judo, everything starts in the stand-up, correct? Yes, it starts with the stand-up and getting some hands-on to grip your opponent. So at this level, what are the, some of the things you, you want to see from an athlete? At this level, really, it's just seeing some of that aggression, making those attacks, being brave enough to take those chances like that. So what happened there? So what he did is he threw his opponent um, for a partial score, and now he's holding her down to try and finish the score off. Now at U10, um, best of my understanding, they don't have winners or losers right now. So even if someone, he's just won the match now by continuing with the hold down for 10 seconds, but they'll keep fighting. And what indicates winning a match? The, the scoring system really is a, a one point. Um, I like to say any match in judo is kind of a sudden death and overtime match if somebody gets the right throw in. So you can score those points either with a throw, uh, having a well-executed throw, or by holding your opponent down for a certain amount of time. As now... Harley Ann just resetting herself, <laughs> resetting the gi. <laughs> yes, yeah, you gotta have some time to do that. It's uh, get, get a little shooken up sometimes. And I notice when you watch, when we get to higher levels, a, a lot of fidgeting with it. Even while you're moving, it seems like there's a lot of fidgeting with the gi. Absolutely, they can be very, they're very restrictive of sizing the higher, higher level you are because it can create a certain advantage. So I noticed, I know folks at home cannot see it, the scoring, they gave uh, Alex the point, but now they just continue on to finish the round, correct? Yes, that's correct. At this level, um, they, don't, they don't have winners or losers. They really just want them to have that experience. Um, but it's important to have scoring so they know when they've been successful and what's working for them and what isn't. And they are now finished? Correct. They're two minutes and... What is the pro now? There's a there's a coming on process and there's a coming off process. Correct. Correct. Yep. You bow onto the mat and you bow into your match and then you bow out in a reverse order. Essentially, you bow onto the edge of the mat and then you bow onto the edge of the square to enter the fighting arena, and then you bow right before you fight your opponent. Is it respect to the opponents, the sport, or the arena? All of the above. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting for the yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we continue on in this category. Uh, Natsu McLeod and out of Avonhurst in Regina. In Regina, yes. And taking on Jacob Hebert. And Jacob is out of Flint Flon. Long travel here. 
Yeah, they're very committed that club to bring, come all the way down here. Uh, why, why sticking in Saskatchewan? Uh, family Roots, the Flin Flon Club is actually um, run by uh, Weens from Moose Jaw originally. Oh, yes. nice. And that's one of the questions I will have a little bit later. We are in Moose Jaw here at uh, Vanier Collegiate. Uh, I'm going to assume the heart of judo in Saskatchewan. A lot of events take place in Moose Jaw um, because of our facilities, our dojo, and really just because of the very dedicated um, people in the Moose Jaw Club who are willing to step up and help out. And just to let the folks at home know, Jacob Hebert is with the Blue Sash. Yes. And it would be Natsuma Cloud without. So there is Jacob as you see it with the, the mouth guard. And there you see Natsu. At this age, I think they're just trying to figure out, are they just trying to figure out how aggressive they are? Because I think you could be very tentative at this age. It really can be, um, and especially it's different between boys and girls, and uh, sometimes you have to develop that aggression. You have to give yourself permission to do that. And at this level, how long are the matches? Two minutes is how long they run them. Though kids at this age would have enough energy for a lot longer. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of strange to me that the older you get, the longer they go. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it's going to be interesting, folks, as we go along here. We're not going to stick in this division or age group. It's going to bounce along uh, here and there as we go along with division and ages and level group and that sort of thing. And just to also give you, you know, to, to paint the picture here, this is Matt B here at, at Vanier Collegiate. As you see, Natsu and Jacob continue on with just seconds left in their, in their match. And they... Went for it all right off the hop. That was great. Absolutely. There's yeah. a lot of action there. There is. Two aggressive uh, athletes here on Matt B. There is a Matt A. And um, so we will keep you up with level the names. So you at home, if you see your nephew, your grandson, or just a kid you know from school. And, and that's how we are going to keep you keep up. We're going to teach you the sports. I'm going to learn a lot. Desi's going to teach me a lot. Get frustrated with me because that's <laughs> just the way it's going to go as we see it. Replay of a beautiful throw. Just went off the wrong side, but it's a great effort. Is the, even at this stage, the point is to try to get them off their feet? Yeah, absolutely, really. It's just using your partner's momentum against them. And now, uh, same. At, uh, we're now in the U10 level one, as we now have Cadence Rempel out of Swift Current against Nora Thiessen, also out of Swift Current. And Nora will be wearing the blue sash. Cadence will not be. So Cadence, both have the the yellow belts on, and that would be Cadence with the first aggression. <laughs> So is this the beginner level? Is this the, the, the first entry level of, of judo? Yeah, it really is for the most part. Sometimes they, they might run a U8 category, but U10 is really the first recognized um, age level for competition. And Often they still mix uh, the girl fighters with the boy fighters in U10. Even still, because the girls probably whip up on the boys. At that age, the <laughs> girls are a lot more aggressive, actually. Hey, That's ju um, just even noticing how much uh, uh, Cadence and Nora here are just bouncing up and down when you see they will stop and, oh, yep. <laughs> yep. And just bounce and go right at it. I love this. Yeah, me too. And the scary part is doing it with a smile. <laughs> That's what I say. You should be scared when somebody's enjoying trying to be up. And the great thing about judo, yes, and I, I've even heard the word around here, fight. Yes. They, they call it a fight, but this is a very safe fight. Yeah. For the most part. Absolutely. It, it, I mean, as combat sports go. Judo, traditionally, the Japanese term means the gentle way, right? Okay. It's um, obviously people are going to get hurt like they're in any sport, but really, yeah. Bang our mouths a lot. As Nora is getting looked at by the official. Yep. Oh yeah, she's. Oh, she's ready to go now, though. <laughs> oh boy, that 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 was a mean face, right? On. Right. That's great. That was fun, and that's just a little taste of what you're gonna get for the the rest of the afternoon here. As 
That was a great little fight there, a little bit of adversity, and you see them continue on. And this is going to be very fast and furious as we're going to see probably what happened here. Tossed to the ground, and I think she probably would have bit her lip or something like that. But that Absolutely. It happens a lot. Great little replay there. As now we're at the U14 male, 55 to 60 kilo. Uh, so these are uh, starting to get up there in ages. We have Thomas Burns from Avonhurst in Regina, and that is him right there in the, the blue sash. And on the other side, we'll have Elijah Sevright as we're waiting for, don't think Elijah's on the floor. Looks so, like they're trying to find him now. Oh, they're trying to find him as he... Oh, he, he might be injured. Oh, okay, so what we're seeing now is, please explain what we're seeing. Yeah, so what, what happens um, if, if somebody is injured uh, during competition or just prior and their name is already on the draw sheet, uh, you still have to go out um, enter the match, bow in, and then you just don't have an opponent to fight, so you're awarded the match as a win, and then you bow off. So everything is a battle, but very proper. Everything is proper. That's the Japanese culture. A lot of the, you know, the respect, the composure, it all comes from the Japanese culture. It's composure yet violent. This is, speaks to your heart, doesn't it? It really does. How did you know? <laughs> and what did you say? We were talking about off-air, folks, about Deadpool, maximum effort, but there's a term in judo. What is it called? Yeah, so judo is actually uh, the theory of maximum efficiency, minimum effort. And that just meant the point that you are capturing your opponent's momentum and using it against them. You're taking every advantage that you have. As we're just hearing the, the the officials warning, be ready for your matches. Yeah, I think they're hoping to speed it up a little bit. It's it's hard when you don't have a constant, um, usually a bigger turn sheet of a screen that shows you what match number you're on. But and that, and that's another thing we also to let you folks at at home know it is we're we're almost in a run and gun mode right now, <laughs> as uh, we do have. Uh, Saskatchewan Judo Association has helped us out with a lot of scoreboards and we got a great camera on the scoreboard as we're going to have Anna Young uh, out of Saskatoon YMCA, Harley Ann Allen, who we've seen already from Junori and, sh and it is Harley Ann with the blue sash. This was a very tentative start, but got incredibly aggressive very fast. Sometimes it takes a while just to find that right opportunity. Sometimes they look, so they're also on the mat, you will probably see a look of maybe their coaches as well. And at this level, the coach, what is the coach's job here? Absolutely, so at this level, the coaches um, are yelling things at them, trying to remind, um, really lots of them, just to attack. It's more basic, just just go get them, right? Keep going, really uh, encouraging, sort of. Not a lot of over technical advice. But uh, again, this is the, the U10 level two. And uh, as we see Harley Ann Allen and, and Anna Jung, as we see uh, Anna on the on top there, and they separate. What's the signal from the referees trying to Reset their gi. Yes, yeah, just get them reset. I'm not sure if uh, they might be giving her the full point for that last throw there. And if they did, that's why they've stood them up to restart the fight. But again, as you mentioned, at this level, this is just them getting that experience. Yes, exactly. But even not just mat experience, to go through a, at this age, go get, out, get the nerves out going through a, pro a provincial competition because this is incredibly different. 
I'd love to say you get the nerves out, oh. but you never get the nerves out. But you get a routine. And you get your way in. You get your. You just go through everything, so you know kind of what's going on. So then, there's only a certain amount of nerves. You you just deal with the nerves when you get to the higher level. Well, and that's it. And you just learn that despite the nerves, you persevered, and so you know you can continue to do so. As that was Anna Young and Harley and Allen in the U10 level two. And we're going to continue on in this division. As we say, we're going to flip back and forth as, as things go on. I'm just moving on here. It looks like it's going to be Natsu McLeod and Alex McLean that will hit the mat as the saw the, the last competition there finish. We see Natsu and Alex. And what did the official yell to get started? Uh, he says Hajime. Don't make me slow it down for you. I can't Hajime. pronounce it no, that but good. Yeah. Hajime, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the official raises hand up is that that's so that's a full point that's that's what we call ippon it's a full point and at a higher level the match would be over at that point okay. but at this level they just reset and starting at you're gonna see a lot of offensive moves but i think that's the easy part the defensive moves like hooking and that sort of thing looks like the next level for these athletes. It is. So the interesting thing about judo is you can have a lot of force, but unless it's in the right direction, it's not going to be as effective. So you need to learn to use that force in the right direction, which is kind of the next step for these guys. So you see Alex has the mullet going, which I love. Speaks to my heart. So what would you say to an athlete that is watching this, or even this is their their buddies from school uh, fighting, that, and they want to get interested in this, and you're a tentative parent? What would you say to that tentative parent? Really, I would say this is just a great set of skills they're learning. Um, you, you have to be brave to go out there and fight somebody. And at this age, um, just to develop that bravery and that resilience Beyond the athletic abilities, those um, those personal abilities are really one of the reasons I love kids at judo in this age. So we get to see a replay of Natsu and Alex. Alex very aggressive during that match. As we are going to jump in age a lot as we, we're gonna. I, I would assume this should be f some fun here. Yeah, this will be a great match. Um, so Joey Irwin, he's a former provincial team member. Eldon Lee is a current provincial team member. He'll be competing at the national championships next month. This is actually a weight category up for Eldon. So Eldon Lee out of the Regina Y and Joseph Irwin. Yes. Also out of the Regina Y. And that's always a tricky thing when you know your opponent, when you train with them, it kind of changes what you do. So this, what is different between, other than uh, facial hair and a lot of strength, <laughs> the difference in between what we've been seeing to this? Well, so night and day. So you see a lot more gripping, breaking grips, fighting for that instead of just grabbing and going. Uh, they're doing a lot more work trying to set up very specific attacks that they do. And a lot more footwork. Absolutely, they've got to they've got to move, and they know it. 
You can't just stay still. And at this level, two different colored geese as well. That I don't remember this. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm old, folks. I don't remember this, as we see. It's much easier to tell the difference than just with the blue sash here. And so far, no scoring? So far, no score. And this is a four-minute match. As we're 58 seconds in. Joseph is in the white. Eldon is in the blue. I hear him. You say you called it Joey. Probably his mom called him Joey that I just heard from the crowd. So I will now call him Joey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Joey's a very, sh he's very strong. He's a very strong fighter for his, just in general and for his size as well. And something different you're going to see with these guys as well as we start getting more particular about um, technique. So Joey is a left-handed fighter and Eldon is a right-handed fighter. Um, so they stand a bit more different than if they're same side fighting. There's a few other things that people will probably see from international competitions. They will see yellow cards. They will see other sort of things flash up and across the scoreboard. What are some other things that people would need to know as we see Eldon here get back in? Yeah, so actually I noticed it looks like Eldon has a, a small penalty, a Shido, um, and I honestly didn't see them award that. I can't tell you what it's for, but there's a lot more to look for as far as forcing combativity, specific grips you can and can't have. A lot more work in the groundwork. So the yellow is a shido? Correct, yeah. Okay. So you get you can have up to three penalties before you lose the match. Unless it's a and it's a minor penalty. There is a major penalty, and if you were to get one of those, you just immediately Forfeit. lose the match. Okay. Yes. And have you seen that? Yes. <laughs> you say as I you just, say it with a tentative. Just, please, no memories. No, there's just, there's a um, a variety of things. Oh, I'm not sure who are they going to give that to. Probably Joey. I think it was a counter. Yes. As Joey Irwin. Yep. Will be the winner, and now you're going to get your first chance here, Destiny. As we see, they're going to see each other again. I would assume later today. Uh, no, they won. No, it's a round robin. It's a round robin. Yes. Okay. Uh, see, they're questioning whose point it was because they both went down okay. kind of at the same time. I don't know if they're going to review it. They're deciding what they'll decide is who had the most control of that. So not who engages it, but who has the most control? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. But not even, can you have control and fit, not have control and finish? Or like that's where I, if you have control, you're finishing. Yes, correct. So if they can't tell, who has control, sometimes they just won't give the point. And just start again. Yeah. Which there is 116 left in this, in this match. How hard is this for an athlete? Like, how do you compose, this is the other part, how do you compose yourself? It's very hard knowing that the match might be over, but that you could immediately have to start fighting again. Um, you just have to breathe, you're waiting for that decision for them, but in your mind, you're still prepping. Oh, and they've stuck with the original decision to give the point to Joey. So Joey Irwin with the with the W. As we gets the congratulation with from the as we're gonna see this right here. Was it pretty obvious to you that he engaged? Yeah, so that wasn't that wasn't what he got the point for. That wasn't the move. There okay. was um, a subsequent move that he that he scored with, where he essentially Eldon went in for an attack, and okay. Joey used that momentum and countered him. Okay. And we're going to continue in this U18 male, 66 kilo, and in white Arthur Lazinski. And he's out of Lloyd Minster. Aiden Smith out of Avonhurst in Regina in blue. So what he's done right there is give him a Lazari, which is a half point. You can get half points in these matches as well. And two half points will add up to a win. To Arthur. 
Correct. So Arthur Lazinski has a half point. And he is the shorter athlete. Much shorter. But great technique, though. So it looks like they gave Arthur the second Wazaris with the half points called. Um, adds up to a win. So, just to let folks at home know, it could be 10 seconds, it could be four plus minutes plus overtime. Or they give it yeah, to so Aiden. They, I, was, I was questioning that. They had awarded it to the wrong player. So now they both have a Wazari. So the difference that makes is they only need another Wazari to win, which means the throw doesn't have to be quite as perfect. Or if it's a pin, it only has to be 10 seconds instead of 20. You were going to say, was that close? It was close, and it was... Uh, I heard Coach Brain didn't go look, off. didn't look comfortable. That was Coach Brain there going off a little bit, so or Athlete Brain. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so again, Arthur oh, Lozinski had a look. Okay. So he finished it off with a choke. So in his op And the opponent uh, tapped, so that is... Tapping is given up, and that's the end of the match. Yes. Yeah, they're just conferring with Arthur that, yeah, that's what I did. And so, Aiden Smith with the victory. And things, that was a quick, at this level, things can go quick as we're going to see a, a, a few of the highlights here from this fight. That would have been the yes. half point, the second half point. Correct, yep. That was the second half point of, of the match. And when I said you get to see a little bit of everything, we're back to the U10 level two. Jacob Hebert is without the blue sash. Anna. Anna, Jung. yes. A a a say that again? Anna. Anna yep. Jung is with the blue sash. That was beautiful. <laughs> the official was like, yep, that was beautiful. <laughs> exactly. Everybody felt that one. I just think when they're older and they get a little heavier, they, that's an earth mover. There are many times you feel the floor shake when it's a good one. And I try to go to it again. <laughs> like that. That is an intense look. Yeah, they uh, they take it pretty seriously at this age, which is great. <laughs> that might be the hardest part is to get them to relax. It, it, it can be, I would assume. It really is. People who are, are that into it, which is wonderful, um, tend to put pressure on themselves. But then again, you speaking as a coach, it would be easier to rein them back than to instill aggression? Or which way is it harder? Absolutely. It is harder to get them to give themselves permission to be aggressive. Absolutely, that's harder. We don't really ever need to rein back aggression. We just need to control it. So Anna Jung out of Saskatoon YMCA. And Jacob Hebert, we've seen out of Flin Flon. And that was your two minutes between Anna and Jacob. And we're going to stay in this category in the U10 level two. It'll be Natsu McLeod and Harley Ann Allen. And Harley Ann Allen out of Junori. And Natsu McLeod out of Avonhurst as we see the last match between Jacob and Anna Jung.
Now, Saskatchewan has had a lot of great judokins, and Canada Winter Games were just recently as well, were they not? Yes, they were. And how successful was that for Saskatchewan athletes? Or how, uh, how great was it for Saskatchewan athletes then? It, it was really great. They had a fantastic experience. We brought home some medals, some fifth places, uh, and really just uh, made all of Team Sask proud uh, to have the other sports congratulating the judo athletes was, was really neat. And as a judo athlete, that is usually when people get to see judo, it's not usually at a world championship level as itself. It's usually as a part of another sort of games, maybe Canada Winter Games, Commonwealth Games, Summer Games, Olympics. How awesome is that? Like, it's great. Judo in a multi-sport games is, is really great, and people see it and they love it. Sometimes they just say, I don't even know what's going on, but it's exciting. That was me. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> and it's and that's why when I came to you and I've seen the Commonwealth Games men's gold medal and it was two Jadokins from Toronto, which is, I, they, they told me it was rare, but. It is. So Canada at, where is Canada at at, at the level right now? For the size of the country, Canada is doing really well. They had uh, two female Olympic medalists. Um, at the last Olympics, and it's that's a very good outcome uh, for Canada. And so you just you just build on that. You keep going with that momentum. Honestly, even as a country. As Harley Ann is with the blue sash, and Natsu is fighting off Harley Ann, and now they stop and separate. And where would what's the strength of judo in Canada? Would it be Ontario? as just because of population or uh, not? It would be uh, usually Quebec, and part of that is just because that is where the National Training Center and the Olympic Training Center is. Um, and always there has been a strong presence from Ontario because of population, but in the last decade or so, the West has really grown. Um, there's now a regional training center in Lethbridge, Alberta, uh, one in British Columbia, and we train together a lot now, the provinces. We'll travel to train together, oh, and so nice. the West has really grown some strong players as well. Seems like that's what West has to do a lot, is just kind of combine their efforts. That's right. There's another great match here in the U10 level two category between Harley Ann Allen and Natsu McLeod. And we're gonna stay at the U10 age group. We're gonna hit to level one as we get to see The last little bit of that match as they head to the floor. Very quiet, very respectful, but it can get rowdy at competitions, can't it? Absolutely, it can get so loud, especially at big team competitions when your teammates are cheering people on. As we have a couple of new athletes here, Veronica Martin out of Avonhurst and I apologize, Nicole. Arofo, Arofo Eva is how I will say it out of Janori. And Nicole is with the blue sash. I notice you let me take that one. Yeah, I was not brave enough to try. And I apologize to Nicole and her family as Nicole has been the aggressive one <laughs> in this. <laughs> Not that time, that was Veronica coming right at. So is it always, I've even noticed in the older kid, they, you have to go at each other. You can't. Can you be passive at all? No. So you can get you get penalties for non-combativity. So you can't avoid the fight, whether that's refusing to take a grip or once you have a grip, just trying to strong arm and hold your opponents away. That's considered non-combativity. That's not positive judo. So you will get penalized for that. I like that. not po I, positive judo. I like that. Nicole and Veronica. 
finishing off the last few seconds of their match in the U10 level one category. As again, no score being taken in the U10 level as they would just get the mat experience. And I think even them just trying to get used to boot about two on the mat and even just the whole competition sort of thing. Absolutely, just the when and the where, and it's uh, a little intimidating when you first start out. Well, just people, because you're usually stuck in your club, training and training and training, and the only person you see is your, sadly, just your coach. And the same people you fight all the time. Absolutely, it's an entire different experience to go up out there against someone you've never met. But how awesome is it when you get finally get to fight somebody else you don't know? That's a good feeling. You know what? At every level, it's exciting. Even our our kids, kids, our athletes who go and fight at nationals, when they see somebody new on their roster, it's they're excited to try their judo out against someone new. This is great. U10 level three now, and Chloe Snyder out of Avonhurst, and we have Jack Boshek out of Swift Current wearing the blue sash. Jack is looking up at something. <laughs> I think he's maybe watching the time clock. Don't look at the time. No, nope, that's what the coaches are there for. Don't Shout look at the time. Yeah, <laughs> please don't look at the time. But doing that does show you he's an experienced fighter. He, in that he knows that he has to hold her down for only a certain amount of time oh, to get the point. Oh, okay. Now yep. I un Okay, so there was a method to why. Yes. Okay, yep. so he was. He was looking at to see how close he was to getting that point. So, as a judokan here in on Matt B, I just heard a horn from Matt A. Does sometimes I get a little lost, or, or you're just focused on the on the fight? Every once in a while, it does get a little lost, but not too often. Usually, you are just focused on the fight, and and the surroundings are so loud that it's even hard to hear when you're engaged in the fighting probably just that gray whooshing sound is going. Yes. Or you've expended too much energy and you're just telling yourself not to die. Don't. Exactly, you're focused on one thing. <laughs> yes. But there are a lot of athletes who don't necessarily even hear what their coaches are saying because they're just so focused. I, I would assume that would be most. At a certain level, and then when you get to a higher level, that changes again because you're more aware of what's going on around you and you're... The whole when it slows down. Yeah. Because I can't imagine how fast it is here, especially like you have Chloe and Jack here. If you're at this age, at the U10 level three category, it must just go a million miles an hour. Yeah, it really, it really picks up. There's a lot going on. Now things are different. Vets, male, one. We have Logan Thiessen out of Swift Currents in the whites, Michael Yee out of Regina Y in blue, and this one started at three minutes. Yes, they don't expect us old people to go the whole <laughs> four minutes. That uh, it's, a, it's a mercy. It's a mercy. Yeah. So it's not vet male one. It's vet mercy one. Yeah, that's right. Oh wow. And I'm not sure if they're going to stick with giving that point to Logan or if they're going to switch it. That was one of those throws. But yeah, there we go. That could have gone either way. It was Michael's throw. Okay, yeah, because he pointed to, yes, to Logan to with him. the point. Yep. So I was, yeah. So we'll, we'll get to see. I'm, I'm getting it as we get to finally see, we get to see what happened here. So Yeah, so Logan initiates the throw, and then Michael counters him. That is great body control to re in midair reverse it like that. Absolutely. So that's that'll be a counter that he practices a lot and was pre prepared for. So would these two have seen each other enough to know that this? Is, oh, that's no, that's no, a they no. would not have. Our our vets don't get an opportunity to fight that often. So oh wow. Yeah. That was 
So that's the, the thing you're going to see a lot here. It's going to be sometimes quick and sometimes not so quick as we have the U14 male 60 kilo plus. Oliver Buckman from Vibank and Zachary Kanasevich out of Vibank. And it will be Zach with the blue sash. And Oliver, not, what was the warning? Uh, so at a U14, you can't grip around the neck like that. Really, it's just a preventative measure for, for head injuries and until they're a little stronger. So what are they trying to do now on the ground? So now get up. Just, <laughs> just, well, yeah, one's trying to get up. The other one wants to pin his opponent. What is the referee looking for now? So he's just trying to make sure the shoulders are staying. At least one of the shoulders is staying on the mat. Um, and the the person who's putting the hold down on the other person, that their legs are free. So if your leg gets trapped by your opponent, then they actually will call that hold down broken. And you had two half points there for Oliver Bookman over Zachary Kanasevich. And it took a while to award the second point. The two, the, after the half point was awarded, they waited a, a while to stop it. Or did it stop right away? I'm just trying to figure out how. So we get to see them go to the floor here. Yeah, so what happened was he got his half point for the throw, and then he started into a hold down, but Blue got out of the hold down, Kay. and then he put him into a new hold down, and that's where that second half point came from. So we have Joey Irwin now from the Regina Y. We've seen him already, and Arthur Lasinski from Lloyd. Yeah, and Joey's well ahead of this one. Got a half a point. I almost thought it could have been a full point for that throw, but he's getting close to that 10 seconds on this hold down. And that is, that, yep, intense and quick. Goes, yep. <laughs> okay. As I said, every match is sudden death in overtime in some ways. And so, Joey Irwin with the victory over Aiden Smith. I got to pay attention better. It happens fast. This is why I could see this being a very great spectator sport. It gets very exciting. And especially when you're, you've watched some and you can see some of those throws coming. Now we have Eldon in white, Eldon Lee against Aiden Smith in blue in the U18 men's 66 kilo again. That's a full point. That is a full point. It's a really fast attack from Eldon. It was really nice. Eldon, who had a, the first match against Joey, two elite athletes there, and Eldon was not having much of this one. Nope. So what is that? So it, it's a, a leg hook. Um, but what he's done is he started his entry to the leg hook almost like it was a different throw. Uh, and then he kind of switches halfway through to really capture his opponent's reaction. Because Aiden probably anticipated it and then, or, or not. So oh, you can mix it up, the chess match. Absolutely. Physical chess. Back to the U10, level two, at a young against Alex McLean. Alex will have the blue sash on. Anna will not. Anna has the yellow belt. Alex with the orange. Do belts matter at this level? At this level, belts do generally just speak to experience. Um, there's not a whole lot that you learn in the different belts as far as techniques that maybe affect your fighting, but it just does speak to experience. But then at the open male and female levels after this age, 
is there that the levels or you're just in an open competition? Honestly, it depends on the competition. Okay. There are some very large competitions where you'll have novice categories. So say yellow to green belt, and then the other categories will be blue belt and up or brown belt and up. Just to really provide an opportunity for the lower belts um, to fight some more matches and have some more successes. As Anna with the aggressive approach here on Alex. Anna is all business. Yeah. It's Alex from Junori and Anna from the Saskatoon Y. For a lot of this, these kids, this may be their first or second time at a competition. Oh, wow. Uh, just because with COVID shutdown, it took a long time to get our competitions back up and running. So, Is there a club competition? Like, would each club have their own? Or how, do, how would it work, essentially? Not, not usually a club competition, just because of not enough people. Sometimes clubs will get together. And, um, and have some fights, but for a true competition format, uh, they're always open to province-wide. Um, and usually, when we're running normally, four to six a year in Saskatchewan, I would say. And it is a season? <laughs> At certain levels, it's a season, yes. It's a, it's a very long season. I, but you can't, I, I shouldn't oversimplify it like that as Anna and... Uh, <laughs> So we're finished there. And now we're going to continue on as you see Anna and Alex. Anna with the aggressor. As they also switch out the officials here in every few matches. As we see. Jacob he Hebert going to go against Harley Ann Allen. Jacob from Flin Flon. And there's Harley Ann. Would you like to see points given at this level or just to get experience? That, I, as an athlete, probably experience, as a coach, maybe point. I don't know. I, I, it's kind of half of one. Honestly, I know a lot of athletes, even younger athletes, that they wanted the points and the wins and loss just so you can learn. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest, most of them, they know. <laughs> they, yeah. You, and know, you, can tell you may not language. have awarded it, but you know who won it you yeah. know who lost. But... Um, I applaud the ability to, you know, open that up to competitors of every level. But the ones who will go on to be further competitors, they, they would prefer to be scored. So as a judo competition, um, as you see Jacob and Harley Ann with Jacob at the control position right now. They mix the each, there's blocks on each mat, correct? And w th this is where I kind of got lost and then I was thinking everything that you were here to figure out what the blocks were. <laughs> um, so he, in this block right now, U18 men, uh, three different U10 categories, and then we've seen two different U14 male and, uh, and the vets. And just because of the amount of athletes probably. Yeah, well, and so essentially also because you don't, you need that rest in between matches. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen a lot of quick matches. Uh, what we haven't seen yet are some of the golden score matches. Sometimes when people go four minutes, when they go 10 minutes, uh, you need a decent recovery for that. So you, they juggle the categories so that there is time in between fighting. So unlike a boxing where you could 
move and run and <laughs> try to try to get things away or get away from things. This is a four minute blowout. Go as hard as you can. Absolutely. It's uh, pushing pushing your system to the limit the entire time. How would you approach this as a judo parent? Like, how do you approach being a judo parent? Is it like just any other sport? You just be supportive and let them go, or is it a little different as a, as a combat sport? I think it's probably different if you were a judo athlete and then are a judo okay. parent. Okay, um, you as a judo athlete parent. Yes. How I approach it, um, I don't eat all day long until my daughter's done fighting. Okay. <laughs> I, I you get very nervous for them but don't project that um, and it really is just not only providing that support but trying to enable them to do it on their own providing them those tools and that encouragement so we've jumped a, a match here because I believe one of the girls was injured that's what that line through the name was okay As we're back with Cadence Rempel and Veronica Martin. Veronica with the blue sash. Cadence without, both in yellow belts. Cadence from Swift Current. Veronica from Avonhurst. And we'll get back to the other categories. We're talking about being a combat sport parent. Do you sometimes wish you weren't an athlete? No, because it gives such a much better understanding of what's happening. If you're not familiar with judo, uh, as a parent, I know a, a lot of parents tell me, they're like, well, I'm trying to help, but I don't actually know what to tell them. I say things, I don't know if they're helping, parents tell me. And, it's, um, and that's where, in that case, you just provide encouragement. You may not know the sport, but you know your child, mm -hmm. right? You know when they're working hard and when they're not. You know when they're struggling and when they're not. And those are the places for the parent in that case. When to push, when to pull back. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Veronica trying to shrimp her way out. Escaping from a hold down is one of the hardest things. That's the, one of the few terms I remember is trying to shrimp. That's right. <laughs> get your hands free and shrimp your way out. The, the hold down time used to be 30 seconds uh, and they shortened it to 20 seconds because in all reality, if you haven't found your way out <laughs> yeah, by 20 seconds, 20, you're, you're not getting out. For out. 30, yeah. yep. It's well done by Veronica. And a smile. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> They're tough. I notice they think they know what they want to do, but they kind of are, they're still a little bit tentative of knowing what to do or what not to do. And that actually lasts for a really long time. It's something we do at our club. I do a lot of work of training out hesitation, is what I call it, um, because you know you can get countered. And so even though you know it, you don't have a feel that you're in a safe spot to do it. We have Nora Thiessen now from Swift Current against Nicole Arofeyeva. You see Nicole right there wearing the blue sash. I'm amazed there's not as many headbutts or head clashes. But at the older one, I notice there's more of the head. Yeah, absolutely. They take they take some bigger risks, and uh, really, they uh, you'll notice they close the gap mm -hmm. a lot more. Yeah. This is the U10 level one. And again, this U10 level 
a two minute match, no scoring. Get it all out. Here in the Saskatchewan Provincial Judo Championships, Maddie Collegiate, great hosts. This is a really nice venue for this, it really is. How the mats perfectly fit, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> With a lot of planning. A lot of, yes. And even the judo mats have changed colors over the last few years. Yes, they have, yeah. Just as I've noticed it. It used to be darker? Red. Red, yes. Yep, red and green. Had some red and blue at one point in time. But how good is it to evolve, though? It's great. Um, I took a, a big, almost like a decade off of this sport. Uh, and when I came back in and started coaching, how the sport has evolved is phenomenal. It's um, just become so much more technical, so much more dynamic. So their gi has to be in order before they leave? Yeah, before you bow out or award any points or... And at, at an older level, um, you have to have everything nice and tight because you're only allowed so much time to fix your gi. And you will get penalized because otherwise people used to take their sweet time, fix their would, judo gi, trying yeah. to pitch their breath. I do that all the time. I, I was of that generation who was <laughs> able to do that. Nora Nicole there, finishing off. of aggression is Chloe Snyder from Avonhurst and Jamie Herbert Kosiken here in Moose Jaw. They waved at each other and said a big hi. <laughs> there was a, an all-girls female camp a few weeks back I think I'm guessing maybe they made friends there. That's great. And this is a level three same age vastly different. These seems to have a little bit more. Yeah, so really the levels at U10 are dedicated to the, um, the kind of like the size, a little bit to the advancement, but they, they group the athletes as in U10 as to what will make good fighting partners for each other. A, a lot of it is the size, but some of it is the, the skill as well. And these two are good fighting partners. Yes, they are. because both are very aggressive. Yeah, they're, actually that's some advanced moves for, for a U10 category, I'm surprised. So is that on them or on their club or on their coach? Uh, really could be any. It could be something they've done in the club. Um, Sometimes they have other martial arts backgrounds that help speed that up. And, and, but absolutely does speak to athlete maturity because you just have to be at a certain stage to even understand those concepts. A <laughs> little after the, <laughs> little after the buzzer, but that was great work. Once you get going, it's hard. Yeah, to stop. they were, they were, <laughs> they were like, give me points in a four-minute round. We're ready to go. <laughs> As they bow to each other, and I'm excited to see them go again. Probably not again. They won't go against each other in the round robin format, but that was. That was, nice that was fight, good. Yeah. yeah, that was good. That was, and a little bit of a smile too while they were doing <laughs> it, which frightens me. <laughs> you know, bad for their fathers. Oh gosh. 
Yeah, my mother could tell you stories. Yes, oh, your <laughs> mother, yes. Nothing worse, as we talked about earlier, nothing worse than a smiling assassin. That's right. And we're back to the vets. Male one, Logan Thiessen. So with current Colton Adanko uh, from Kosakan here in Moose Jaw. And it is Colton with the blue sash. So I'm actually thrilled to see Logan on the mats. Um, we are of the same generation. Uh, I used to fight back in the day, and I haven't seen him fight in, in decades, and it's great to see him out again. The thing you'll notice about vets is they're just happy to be out there, <laughs> yeah, man. I feel like I'm not broken. Right? <laughs> It's a good day. I, I was able to get out of bed as we get to see how this finished off. So what I love about vet judo is it's always absolute passion for the sport and nothing else. Yes. So now we are at the U14 male 60 kilo plus. Oliver Buckman from Vibank. Roan Mateo Ngonu Noje with the blue sash. It's Roan. It's like a little bit on the defensive end of things. Once you get into the plus categories, there can be a really big difference between the size and strength uh, of the players. As Roan is from Avonhurst, Oliver from Vibank. little footwork there to avoid that it looks like. Oliver with a smile. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm <laughs> just watching it's, this one. I'm like, I don't have anything left in the tank. It's something else. For them. So there's just, I should say, just 90 seconds left. Oof. Yeah, and so I can tell when I was talking about their size, because I can tell they're both very strong. I can still tell they're struggling with the strength of their opponent, and that's why they're having a hard time um, creating those opportunities. But when you talk about being exhausted, that's the other thing. You hold those muscles tense for that long, and it takes a lot out of you. So with 60 seconds left here, I think they're going to reset. Reset, fix their gears, and I'll get them going again. It would almost be questionable here whether or not there might be some non-combativity penalties, but seeing as they're both getting kind of an equal equal amount of that, they probably won't do much about it. Oliver got the half point. He got the half point. He's trying to get that hold down to finish it off. And it looks like they're, the counter is on for the hold down now. And there it is. And you hear the horn for the second half point. That was a great physical battle by Roan and Oliver. Oliver has awarded the win, and they have earned a Slurpee for after the <laughs> competition. Right. Yep. 
this. We're going to see Joey Irwin again as we're going to finish off. There's the first half point. That was just a battle of attrition in that last match. Absolutely. So we'll see if Joey finishes this one quite quickly again. We'll have to keep our eye on him. He's been ending them pretty quickly for us. Yes, against Aiden Smith. Let's see Aiden in the blue gi, Joseph in the white. This one was very quick last time. And quick again, that one. Yep, after being spiked into the mat, oh, he would absolutely. see lights. As Aiden is on the ground. Medic. Yeah. Medic. As the official, yeah, we were going to ask for probably some sort of medical help after that. Yeah, absolutely. He was out for a few seconds. As we're going to see here. Joey is a very strong athlete. So it's that that you want to watch for is any time that the head bounces off the mat there. Um, you know, it's always just better safe than sorry anytime. But good work by the official and also by Joey as well. Absolutely. So, you know, Joey went to go into the hold down. You could see his opponent was in pain. Um, and so he, he let up. And it's a hard decision to make because the refs don't always see that. Um, and then I heard somebody, probably Coach Joy, say, no, go into the hold down. But he was very, very tentative, very respectful about it until the ref stopped the match. So how tough is this for the opposing athlete, for somebody like Joey, that you just have to stand and wait? I would assume this is over. Uh, yeah, usually once you get yeah the medic attention like that, the match is over. I don't know if they'll have to call Joey back out to award it to him or not. but. Uh, we just we need to be really safe. So anytime you get that kind of medic intervention, you're not you're not fighting again. Just better safe than sorry, as usual. And I, Aiden, probably in his head, he's like, get up, get up, get up, get up. And then the official and the medic are like, don't get up, just lie there. It's soft. Just stay and get better. Absolutely, just give it a minute. And it's not always what you think, you know, sometimes it's your head, sometimes you have the wind knocked out of you. And you need a good medic that is a little bit more sports oriented. Absolutely. Great work by Aiden. He's gonna Go talk to his coaches. Have some well-earned rest. Yeah. Collect himself, figure out what happened, and regroup. And we're going to stay in the U18 male, 66 kilo. Eldon Lee, Arthur Lazinski. Arthur in the blue sash. Eldon without it. Eldon out of the Regina Y. Arthur out of Lloydminster. So how far out of the yellow can they get? Like right now, I don't know. Oh. So if if progress is continuing, it used to be as soon as you cross that point, they stop okay. you. But now if there's progress continuing, or even if you are you know if you have someone in a hold down or something's happening, as long as you're safe from the other mat area, they'll let you continue. You nod in approval. Yeah, it was, was, he was very fast. Eldon was very fast on that attack, and he got his opponent moving towards him so that he could use that momentum and drop under uh, with his throw. And that is it. Eldon with the victory. And that's it for that category. That category is now done for the day. That is done for the day, yeah. okay. This is how quick things can go, especially in his in that much strength. So we're going to head back to the U10 categories, and we're going to 
have Jacob Hebert. Sorry, that would be Natsu McLeod and Anna Jung. So Anna from Saskatoon, YMCA. And there's see Jacob from Flint Flock. I think Anna has enjoyed her competition so far. Absolutely, and the great thing about this category is there's there's five of them in, and it's a round robin. So that means they get four fights. They get a lot of fights, a lot of great experience. So all their training for that's a long ten minutes in five different bouts. So Absolutely. all their training, uh, probably since I would assume late August, early September. September is usually when they when they start. When school starts, usually they run it around schools. So. The defensive post, just be heavy as possible. Yes and no. You gotta, um, you gotta fight back. You wanna be able to be reactive. You, you really do the best. You know, a lot of people get really tight. And it's a turtle, as we call it. And, um, but you wanna be able to be reactive to what your opponent's doing. I do like the reaction sometimes with the, the judge. They're kind of, the snap look, I go, they don't really know what happened. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, and that, honestly, at this level, you won't see it at older levels, but there's sometimes more communication between the referees and the athletes. I know the referee's position is not that of a teaching spot, but it can be a teaching moment, can it? Really? They usually look towards that at the U10 or if they're specific like beginner tournaments or a bit beginner levels, absolutely, the referees um, will give guidance. Whereas in an older category, you might just get a penalty for something, the referee will take the time to educate and explain uh, first. So at a younger level, you get to teach, and at an older level, you get to yell at them. <laughs> That's right. You get to judge them. <laughs> you get to judge the judges. The life of it. Have you been a judge? Once or twice. Um, not your get down. It is, no, it's not a position I envy. Jacob Hebert, as you see right there. And before that, you saw Alex McLean. He's in the blue sash. And to your right. Alex would, uh, I, I feel Alex in me. Just grit my teeth and a hammer. Just that is, go get That it. is my look. Yeah. I... I am one with Alex right now. <laughs> yeah, I love it. But also Jacob being super calm. for <laughs> as you smile I, I just smile because I that really was the is the worst feeling to me being being in a pen and feeling like you're not going to be able to get out it's a very frustrating position to be in I I love the, the watch when they keep fighting to the last second that's what you should do will be the last bout 
in this U10 level two category. Yeah, well, there have been a lot of strong fighters in this category. Very yes, aggressive fighters. They are aggressive. And from four different clubs, you get to see fight some different faces, unless you're Harley Ann and Alex, which you see too much of each other. That's right. But everybody else get to fight somebody else, learn somebody else's different style, how you do all of that. That's great. Jacob Ebert and Alex McLean get to finish off that category. We're going to the U14 male, 55 to 60 a kilo, Thomas Burns, course and race. This is their first and only matchup because both were injuries, I think. Yeah, I believe so. I believe maybe it was uh, Elijah. Elijah Severite yes. out of Avonhurst, where as you get to see the last finisher of two aggressive fighters. And so now we get to see Burns in white, race in blue. Get it all out, it's the only time you get to hit the mat. Burns is from the Avonhurst Club in Regina. Race from Battleford. Oh, oh. beautiful. Thomas Burns. He, he knew what he wanted. He was setting it up and he was going for it that whole time. <laughs> They're the awkward, unlike the veterans. They're the <laughs> awkward age of, do I really shake your hand? Do I, don't I? But that was great. Nice work. So we get to see how that finished off. As you said, he had it set up. Great finish. Yeah, he was right where he needed to be. And I, you know, watched him at the beginning. He knew where he wanted his hands. He knew what attacks he was trying to set his partner up for. It wasn't just uh, an attack of opportunity. It was intention. So there you just saw Nicole. Erofieva and Cadence Rempel right there. This is U10 level one. It's really great when girls start the sport at this age um, because they do keep that aggression. They don't get nervous about being aggressive or being physical when they've done it from that age. Eventually, sometimes, you know, you lose that as a and, girl and, and going and through did, the socialized system. And yeah. did you? No. <laughs> no. I'm not oh, sure if no it was comments. because I started young enough or it's just who I am. <laughs> and do you still fight? Um, from time to time, a few years back, I stepped on the mats for the first time in 21 years. It was a mixed bag of results. It was <laughs> yes. fun. Um, I actually was potentially going to fight today. The problem is there aren't a lot of uh, veteran females uh, that, that go on to fight anymore. So it's for me, it's finding those opportunities. Obviously, I don't want to fight with any of my athletes, um, partially because I don't want to take opportunities from them, partially because I'm not sure I can win. So. <laughs> Coach has to be the alpha. That's <laughs> exactly. Let's, let's just pretend I can win. Let's not answer that unasked question. And then I would assume, especially at that, in, if you're in the female group, how if you have gone that long, you're pretty elite. Like if you've, if you've been a Jadokin for that long. Maybe, maybe not. It just depends. No, yeah, usually those who stick around it competed at someone at a national level or, or something like that. And, and lots of us do go on to, to take that coaching role and continue to be involved. Um, because there aren't that any females, it's always like, well, if my child's doing judo or if I'm there, it'd be a shame to, mm -hmm. for me not to contribute. Yes. And probably a lot uh, safer to be a coach at this age. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Except when we're, you know, have odd numbers and the provincial coach asked me to step in and train with one of the athletes. No. Oh, no. 
<laughs> I like that. Oh, no. And great work by Cadence and Nicole. Very Big happy. hugs. Yep. I like that. Again, the smiles all around while fighting. U10 level one will finish off here with Nora Thiessen and Veronica Martin as they get to take the mat. Nora from Swift Current, Veronica Avonhurst in Regina. I don't want to insult them to say they're adorable, but they are adorable and deadly. Uh, yes, adorable and violent. Exactly, my two favorite things. I'd just like to see that much fire coming from a little person. And they just go right at each other. Absolutely. I do love seeing the coach in the top left. Who is that that coach I'm pretty sure is dad as well. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nora's dad? Uh yeah, I think that's Logan Jason, who is fighting in the bets. Yes. And he's smiling while he's shooting as well. Absolutely. Watching the daughter. That's great. Proud dad. Say the worst part is happening right there. Yeah, don't don't want to accept it. No. was a fun way to finish that category, the U10 level one. And smiles. <laughs> nice, very happy. Back to the U10 level three. Jack Boshek and Jamie Herbert. We saw Jamie and Chloe Snyder have a great battle between the two. teaching moment. Exactly, that's what we're talking about. Just explaining to them and reminding them. So this is what we were seeing before too, when you notice the, the bigger weights, that strength there. Um, really creates, makes it harder to create those opportunities uh, to attack, and that's what they're combating with there. And for the U10, these are two, I think this U10 level three, all three of these athletes, incredibly strong. Yes, absolutely.
time. That was, yes, two very strong athletes. Oh. Jack and Jamie get to finish off their provincials. Very tough battle. That category was tough between those three. It really was. They were they were well matched. Mm -hmm. so we get to see the veteran M1 with smiles before they hit the mat. Michael Yi from Regina Y, Colton Ladanko from Kosakin. And Colton with the blue sash. Now, if you want to talk about strength, Michael is a very strong competitor. This will be a very challenging match to, you know, to have to fight a brown belt and a strong competitor. Z Zoltan Adanko. So what I expect that the ref is explaining is just because Zoltan is an orange belt, there will be no chokes or arm bars or anything uh, on the ground okay. because you don't engage those until you're a green belt. So they're just reminding the brown belt that that's not. And for Zoltan, will that be the next for him? Yeah, yes, he'll go up to a, a green belt next. And uh, yeah, that opens up for uh, chokes at that point in time. So they actually got a little confused there. The ref called the hold down on. And I don't, and I think they thought he said stop. So, so Michael uh, let Zoltan out mm -hmm. of the hold down. Even Zoltan was a little confused because yes. he still more officiating going on. Yes, and this is a very experienced referee. Uh, so he's just given a, a shido, uh, and I, I believe the signal I saw him give was for um, a gripping. He was gripping with two hands on one side and not using it for anything. That's what it looked like the ref was saying. So they, they are giving the half point to Michael just um, because he really used that momentum and turned Zoltan onto his back. This is, yeah, starting to oh, be, there, there we go, yeah. Yep. I think that was just more by, more gas in the tank on that one. Absolutely, I, um, Michael was doing a lot of uh, counters in his judo and it wasn't up until that point, he wasn't initiating a lot of the attacks. Um, but you're right, it, it turned that corner where he could feel that his power was more as his opponent slowed down, and so he decided to initiate the attack at that point in time. Yes. Zoltan, Hadanko, and Michael Yi. They're very entertaining, too, with those two fighters. Anytime you have a fighter who does uh, a lot of counters, it's it's more of a tense match because it could turn on a hair. Is that just a style or an experience, or what would it be? Um, it is. It's both. 
Uh, it starts with experience, but it, it is also a style. A lot of fighters um, do it a lot more, and it just depends on what your, your strengths are as a fighter. Um, this is the beauty of judo is is there's a way to use all sorts of different strengths, whether it's speed or actual strength or, or knowledge or experience. And so your tactics and techniques change based on what your strengths are. As we just saw, Ron Mateo and Gano Jale and Zachary Kanasevich. Ron had himself a battle with uh, Oliver Vukman earlier, and it was just a straight grind. Now we're going to see what Roan and Zachary can do here. Roan with the blue sash. Zachary without it. Roan seems to have a great height advantage. I'm just not sure he knows how to use it just yet to the best. How dangerous will he be once he figures it out? Yeah. It'll make a big difference for him. <laughs> it really will. Roan's got the strength part down. And he's calm. He is. Yep. He's not getting. Uh, he's not making reactive moves. Or so he's talking to him about stepping out. Okay. So, so now he's got a penalty because he stepped out of the square to avoid the attack. Okay. And so that's what you get the penalty for. So oh, there we go. So, so he got the full point there, but he wasn't understanding what the oh, ref was saying. Oh, he just kept going. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, Ron, you got it. Uh, you're good, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Please let's, uh, let it go. But great little battle between Ron and Zachary. Oh, now a little bit of another teaching moment. I think even these two athletes were not used to having a high-level official like that, too. They're just a little, they're both a little startled right now. Absolutely, and that in itself can be intimidating sometimes. As we get to see how Ron finished things off here. Great way to finish it, and then you'll wait for the referee to step in, and he's done it. That's right. Back to the senior men, 66 kilo. Leah Lazinski again. Yeah, so Ellen's fighting a second category today. So fighting seniors, fighting up in age category, um, but also up a weight category for him. He's normally minus 60. But any chance to get a few extra Just fights Just a few sometimes. extra reps, yep. yeah. And Eldon's preparing for national championships right now. So he wants as many fights as he can get. And sometimes a heavier athlete tests a few different things. Absolutely, you gotta be faster than you normally are. Because this is what can happen when you have a heavier person that can just lean and lean. That's right, and they can just you know hold you there with their strength sometimes. So you gotta be faster and you gotta make a move. So again, Arthur out of Lloydminster. Elden from Rujana Y. And I don't know Arthur, but I'll tell you this. Lloyd Minster has always created very strong competitors. Oh, really? A very tough club, yeah. Oh. See, there's the coach in me. I was going, drive, drive, drive. <laughs> <laughs> and you heard it from the coaches as well? <laughs> yep. This is the first of the senior men's 66 kilo. As we're getting into the second stage of this 
that B action. This one a little bit more condensed. This one's been a grind. It really has. Now Luma's really working hard to try and get that hold down for the second half point. But once they stand them up again, he can breathe a bit and take some time. So at what point do they tell him to get back up? When they see no progress. Okay. And, and that is, of course, really subjective, um, which can be frustrating from time to time. Arthur is a strong athlete. And Arthur finally is taken to the ground. They are, Arthur and Heldon are going to see each other again. Yes, they will. Arthur is going to be, he's going to have his hands full, as will Eldon, as that was a grind. It really was. You could almost see that, that turning point there where uh, that conditioning makes such a difference. As Archer is a very strong athlete, and Eld, yep, that was full. Well done by Archer, though. Very much so, yeah. Eldon's a strong competitor, and Arthur's really holding his own well. 12, level two. There is Devin Durr, Kosakin, taking on Charlotte Leonard, also out of the Kosakin. Charlotte will be wearing the blue sash. There she is. So will this be the same as the U10, the two minutes, but will they score points here? Uh, yeah, I believe at the U12 now they are awarding their winning or losing the match. We'll see. We'll see. So there's four athletes in this U12 level two category. This is the first of the six matches. Good work by Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte's a really, a really aggressive fighter. She's a lot of, got a lot of great energy. At this stage, these fighters are really just trying to learn to recognize that that momentum when their partner's momentum shifts. When it's the right time to do that attack. Oh, that was beautiful. 
and and that was it. So that was a really well timed attack by Charlotte, and she might not even know <laughs> that really? she did. It, yeah, it was a very instinctual attack. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's it's part of what she practices, and so she just it just kind of came out. It wasn't super planned when she did it, but that's that's what practice is for, right? Charlotte and Devon. Here's how it finished. Yeah, it was beautiful. I think she surprised you yeah, herself she, there. They're both <laughs> looking at who who did this. Jacob Hebert making the move up an Jacob age level, off. taking off Conrad Gottslig from Control Judo, Jacob from Flin Flon. He was also at the U10. Yes, he was. Does this happen a lot at this level? Up, down, like? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's really because uh, because the attacks are um, less controlled. Um, there's a lot more falling involved, whether you're the one being thrown or trying to do the throw. Um, but there's also not as much commitment to sticking with the groundwork once you're in it because they just don't have as many ideas or, or things, tools mm -hmm. uh, in the groundwork. So lots of times they just get back up to start fighting. When does the groundwork really get taught right away is right away yeah. okay and do athletes find themselves better on the ground than off their feet or is it very on the athlete it, it's very on the athlete it's fighter dependent it's uh, often club dependent depending on how much they focus on their club uh, there's a lot of kids now in judo who have a bit of a jiu-jitsu background uh, so sometimes they're maybe more comfortable on the ground than than other fighters so the skills overlap with each other? Th they do to a certain point. Um, because uh, with the throws in judo, how you, you know, win in an instant yeah. with an upon, uh, there's still just uh, much more of a focus on that in judo. And that's why if you see fighters who, who come across from jiu-jitsu, they are happy to stay mm -hmm. on the ground, you know, focus more on the groundwork. Which mainly puts it on the ref to get back up. Let's do this again. Absolutely. Time ticks down here. So there are no points there. So what that was was a decision. So uh, in, in U12, if there are if nobody has any points, if there's not a winner, um, the, the referee will decide. They'll okay. make a decision on who, you know, who is being more aggressive, who is showing more, showing more judo, that sort of thing. Who is the dominant fighter, and, and they'll just make that decision at that he, age. And yeah. he awarded it to Conrad. Yes. We have a senior men's 73 kilo, Ashton DeBrun from the Regina Y, and Jack Karam from the Regina Y. And that's it. Jack threw him cleanly within about 10 seconds. I mean, both are, both are really great fighters. Um, Jack's experienced previous uh, provincial team member, Ashton's a current he was one of our uh, Canada Games uh, bronze medalists. Nice. Which one was? Uh, Ashton was. Ashton was, yep. okay.
that's that was quick, folks. And now we have a an injury as Jesse Halverson from Kosakin and Riley Stang from Saskatoon YMCA. There you see Riley, but Jesse yes. is injured. Jesse's injured, so he won't be on. So they'll just Riley will just bow on and they'll award the match to him. Jesse still has two more matches, so it's sorry. Uh, Riley. Riley has yep. two more matches ahead of him, so it's all good. Yes. And so we'll go to the senior men's 81 to 90. on our sheet. That was a bow on and bow off. Yes. So there would have been Zoltan who was who we had saw the, earlier, yes. we saw earlier had the concussion in the earlier battle in the last <laughs> No Zoltan Zoltan Zolt was the vet. Zoltan yes. was the vet and so now now we're on to Michael Yee from Vets. And Tony Shochuk, uh, also from Regina Wise. Yes. These two fellows are from the same club. So this will be a club battle. I think after Zoltan had that long match, he, he's like, I am, I d cannot do this twice in one. He was definitely given that look of, I'm, I'm done, we're good here. Yeah. Michael Yee, very calm. And that's part of him being a, doing a lot of counters, right? He's biding mm -hmm. his time. He's assessing what his opponent does. This might be the first pin we've seen today that has to go the full 20 seconds. Tony fighting though. Almost slid out and that is it. There it is. For as calm as Michael looked, he is. <laughs> so, so you have every single one of those muscles tensed yeah. and you're holding someone. Face muscles, every muscle. That's right. <laughs> Smiles between club members. Exactly. And they're like, hey, we made it. Yeah, they're, they're fighting in the senior category now, but they're still vets. <laughs> As you see Michael, the calm takedown. Stayed on top of him, though. Yeah, he really took advantage of that position. The throw didn't, didn't award a score, but... Uh, he wasn't giving up that easy. Senior man 66, Eldon Lee, Arthur Lazinski. There's Arthur. Uh, Eldon took the first one. As you said, Eldon up a, up a weight. But Arthur was able to grind it out with him. Absolutely. And it looks to me like nobody's taking anything for granted no this time thing. around. No. Started out a lot faster. And again, Elder from Regina, Archer from Lloyd. Archer's a pretty good scrambler. He really is. He's got a really good sense of, of momentum and weight yeah. shifting, I've noticed. Uh. 
And Elton's just strong. <laughs> Elton's strong and Elton's fast. Notice they haven't put the half point up yet. I think they're confused as to who it's for. It should be for Elden. That's what the ref pointed to. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Just think these two get to do it all over again. That's right. He's been working hard to make that same throw work the first match too, so it's nice to see he finally got it in here. That's when you are the taller mm -hmm. fighter. Um, that's actually the move Elden was doing. It's actually pretty dangerous when you're the taller fighter because oh. they kind of drop under you. Okay. Yeah. match between those two and we get to see it again. It's going to be awesome. Back to the U12 level two, Devin Durr, right there. Jacob Hebert. The great thing about this ref, Dale, is he is good with all levels, right? You see he's that, that professional ref, but he's going to, you know, help the little guys tie yeah. their belts right. And well, that's... I mean, you, if you treat this age like the like the high age, I think that is where this age really can learn. Absolutely. for Jacob because in his previous U10 category he could have done that five times yes. and it is what it is and now he just gets to feel the win of a Jacob, match. Jacob he's like okay <laughs> and you could tell he kind of was like he, yeah going yeah. back to his coach. He's asking you know his what? coach what yeah. why what are happened? we done? <laughs> the ref said words. It was very professional. Yeah, welcome to winning a match buddy. This is awesome. <laughs> he's like this okay. You see Conrad Gottslig from Control Judo. Conrad had a draw last time. And Charlotte Leonard. She is ready to go. Yep. She did not have a draw last time. No. She had the win. <laughs> So the, the technique he was doing, they, they would have considered um, a sacrifice or a drop technique, and you can't do that at these ages.
Conrad has a future in counter. <laughs> yeah, he really does. <laughs> I, I sense his future as a judoka, as a counter. Because he did that last time in the draw with Jacob and got the ref's award. Yes, he did. And, and Charlotte is um, very strong. So you have to be able to, if he's ready to take advantage of that momentum and her strength, that'll provide him some good opportunities. Fifteen seconds left. Two strong athletes. Very strong. Trying to find those opportunities. I'm actually curious to see how mm -hmm. how this one's gonna go. They're they're very comparable. It's to Charlotte. And he gives it to Charlotte. Okay. And you know, for me, I'm guessing it was just that little bit, that extra aggression. Yeah. Right? Like that's what takes you over the edge. She initiated, the yeah. Yep. But again, nice battle that U12 level two, as you see the two athletes fight. Senior men's 73 on the mat. Ashton. Yeah, so that's another bow right. on yeah, uh, because of the injured competitor. Jesse Halverson. And now we have Jack Karam. Karam. So Jack Karam and Riley Stang. Riley's first match, Jack's second. So these two fighters are very, they're comparable in build. Um, oh, okay. I was just wow. about to say, Jack has experience, like, so much experience. Uh, and, and you see that in uh, how calm he is in setting up those attacks. And Jack Karim. Takes the win from the Regina Y over Riley Stang from Saskatoon Y. Man, I want to get Jack back on the fighting circuit again. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's killing it today. And that's how it finished, very calmly and efficiently. Senior men's 81 to 90. As we see Tony show Chuck. This will be another bow on. There's Tony right there with the bow on. As Zoltan. So hopefully some are enjoying a nice cool drink. I hope so as well. He had a lot of smiles. Yep. This will stay in this weight category. And you get to see Michael Yee in the blue out of the Regina Y. Steven Trudell, first time here on the mat, Kosakin. So I applaud Michael because this is a lot of fights to have in a short amount of time for a veteran athlete. For, yes. Well, he was gassed after the last one. Yep. And this one he. Especially when you're strong, everybody's strong. Absolutely, yep. So he was going for the arm bar, and then they stopped. You tap. You shouldn't be able to arm bar a green belt. Hmm. And Michael gets. Who gets the win? So I'm, I'm guessing his uh, opponent tapped out of the armbar. We just couldn't see it from our side. Or does it have to be a, a functioning tap, or can it be? They haven't had their 
a yell or anything like that? Or? Uh, no, it has to be a functioning tap. Um, but it could be, you know, you could tap anywhere with anything. You can tap your opponent, you can tap the Okay, that's great. You see him get the arm bar. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough call. I'm not entirely sure what happened down there. Back to the U12 level two. Devin Durr, Conrad Gottslick. As this is their final match of provincials. Devin from Kosakin, Conrad from Control. You see Devin. See Con Conrad just had a battle. <laughs> oh, he did. Conrad. He's had a big Charlotte. Day too. Yeah, he. had still usually not the aggressor, but was this time. Maybe his coach told him after the. Definitely be one of the pieces of advice. one hurt. Didn't see if that was head to head or shoulder to head. It's Conrad says he's okay, but I don't think he's okay. <laughs> Devin's even hoping Conrad's okay. He's can't take his that's, that's being an athlete. Yes. Oh, it's just head, yeah. head to mat, I think. Yep, head to mat, and that's <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's he just wants to get up, but he doesn't really know what to think right now. It's always an interesting assessment for medics because um, you hit your elbow, your elbow hurts, you hit your head, your head hurts. But we have to be so cautious. Yeah. Um, and in judo, they're very protective in regards to head injuries and that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, you, you go through the motions. It can be frustrating as an athlete, especially a more advanced one, if you, you're experienced and you know you're okay. Mm -hmm. But you still need to go through those, go through those steps, go through that assessment, just to be safe. And sometimes you're upset you because you think you've done something wrong by quitting or something. Like he's. Yeah, absolutely. Great work by the medic, though. <laughs> yeah, she's great. <laughs> she's now smiles and laughs. And <laughs> You have to be very creative, particularly with young athletes, on on assessing them because, of course, they are nervous yeah. and they are upset, and that can affect how they uh, present. It might even been the first time he's been really, like, e even been hurt. hurt. Exactly. And, and yes, we talked about this even off air. Are you hurt or like you don't know the difference between hurt and injured? No, and honestly, um, what you determine is hurt and injured changes yes. as you change but levels that, yeah, as well, well, right? That yeah. bar moves. <laughs> I'm always injured. <laughs> <laughs> Hurt <Exactly>. is injured. <laughs> and now we have Charlotte Leonard, Jacob Hebert, 
Jacob's sixth fight of these provincials. Jacob from Flin Flon, Charlotte, and Moose Jaw. This should be fun. Yeah, Jacob's been a really strong competitor today. And Charlotte is just, she's yeah. always up for the fight. She loves it. So he stopped it because the boy was reaching around her neck again. Okay. Yep. That's winded. Yeah, that is absolutely what that is. Because I was like, Charlotte's a pretty tough cookie. Yeah. Not much gets to her, but yeah, just that catching her breath and that yeah. look of shock, she definitely had the wind knocked out of her. As we get to see how Check her head out too. Yeah. I've got to say, I do love how um, very balanced the match was. You're just taking all those precautions. Yes. Um, not, not overreacting, but taking all the important precautions with these kids. Tired athletes, last oh. match. Long day. Because this is the second flight. They've been here for a while. Yeah, and they um they did yeah, they did the groundwork fights this morning, Charlotte oh, did. Yeah. Boy. One. So you could sleep tonight for Charlotte. Right. And that is the thing. When you are tired, your reaction mm -hmm. slow. Official as well. <laughs> Senior men's seventy three kilo Ashton De Bruyne, Riley Stang. Their last oh, match, yeah. 73 isn't actually Ashton's normal category as well. He's, he's kind of in midline whether he sticks with 66 or 73. So these competitors are, are really strong for him to work with. Okay. Oh, nice timing. Ashton does have a lot of good footwork that way. So it looks like they, I believe they waved off the half point they gave to Ash. They must have decided it wasn't strong enough.
Christian and Riley. This is a battle. This is a great battle. They both have very different styles. So it's good to see that come together and how that works. So that was one of those moments where the ref really couldn't tell who was the dominant one in that exchange or who to give that point to. So it just kind of left well in the floor. So his side judges are telling him, no, give that half point to Ashton. Ashton and Riley. Ashton Riley Stag. Stag in blue. So what they're questioning right now, the ref just tapped his head and he was questioning whether it was a head dive by Riley because that's uh, that's not allowed just for safety reasons. Head dive meaning? Just meaning that when he did his throw, if his head went down first okay. as the thrower, they want to avoid that. So that's a, a penalty, but they said, no, it wasn't that. So tight match, two minutes in. Absolutely, and this is a, this is a, a hard match, <laughs> a hard right? Like, these guys are yeah. giving it everything, He's every second. Ashton with the big breath, Riley very stoic. whether to give that the half point or not, but the side judges confirmed, yep, go ahead and do it. And that's the match for Ashton. For Ashton, yes. That was a great match. That was great. <laughs> that was a, a grind of a two minute match. It was, and Riley's a strong fighter too, so hopefully that will give Ashton some confidence if he does decide to move up to this weight category that he's fighting and show him he really, he has a place there if he wants to be there. And Jack with the bow on. Yeah, Jack Karain with the bow on, yeah. That's, that finishes the senior men's 73. Michael Yi here, he was going to face Zoltan Medanko. And senior men's 81, 90 kilo. Steven Trudell, you see him right there. I think this might be our last match of the day. It is our mat last match of the day. Tony Shochuk, Tony and Steven have both fought Michael, and Michael got the best of him. So this is gonna be a good, the rubber match for this category, that was nice. Oh, wow. And that was quick, I and mean, that's where you see that experience come into play of a uh, slightly more mature player, right? Really just capturing that momentum. And Tony Shochuk with the victory in very quick fashion. As he walks off as we see how this grimace of pain, I think that was, I think Steven came in not 100%. I think so. So he was able to gut it out there. As the official steps off, takes his bow, and we'll take ours. Absolutely, we'll Destiny. Call it good. Yeah, your thoughts on, on what happened here? Both flights here. It was uh, it was we get to see the 
the, the people who have been in it for a while do their thing, and then the future of judo as well, didn't we? Absolutely, and, and for me it was really great to see a, a really broad base of the younger athletes, uh, and all of them really enthusiastic, you know, not afraid to just go for that throw and be aggressive. Um, and it's been a while since we've had that many veteran athletes or, or senior athletes come out. And it's so very important to um, just set that example uh, for the other athletes. The more senior and veteran athletes you see out there fighting, the longer other athletes will continue their career. So it's been really rewarding to see great participation at both ends of that spectrum. Awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. So for Destiny Gibney, I'm Dan Plaster. Thank you for watching the Judo Saskatchewan Provincial Championships here on Max TV, Local On Demand. If you have program ideas you'd like to see on Max TV Local, let us know at sastel.com slash local.